everybody for for watching this presentation. Metal Energy is a nickel focus exploration company, and we are basically brand new to the space. We listed in November 29th of last year, so not even three months old. But the group behind us, the work group companies, are not new to what we do, and we have been very successful on our ventures. And we're hoping to do the same thing here. So all about nickel. Sounds like you've heard the story before, but we will kind of reinforce what's going on. The electrification of everything, including electric vehicles, uh, renewable energies, uh, headphones, toothbrushes, phones, everything nowadays is going to battery operations. And it's a, it's a trillion dollar investment opportunity for, for anybody. The thing is, it all requires metals. A lot of metals are going to be needed, and especially when it comes to battery products, nickel. Nickel is one of the best metals for, for batteries. Demand is soaring already. Uh, it can be anywhere from two to four times, two to four ti 14 times the amount of demand that we compared to 2019 and 2021 that we need to see hit the market to meet to meet all of the uh, all of these new infrastructure builds electric vehicles hitting the road just demand is there and this is definitely reflected in the nickel price the current price of nickel is over $23,000 a ton but you can see that it has grown considerably over the past 12 months. We expect this price to continue, this trend to continue going forward. And as nickel and battery applications become more prevalent, this price will also continue to grow. So how does metal energy fit into the grand scheme of things? Again, we are a nickel exploration company and we have two major projects. Mana Bridge, which is a past producing mine in, our, in Manitoba, in the Thompson Nickel Belt. And we've also got the Strange Project in Ontario in the Mid-Continent Rift System. Now we are currently drilling the Strange Project. We will touch on that very shortly. But getting over to the Mana Bridge Project, Nickel and Copper in the Thompson Nickel Belt. The Mana Bridge mine was a former producing mine between 1971 and 1977, where they produced 1.3 million tons at a grade of 2.5 nickel and 0.3% copper, down to a depth of about 381 meters. And they left a lot in the ground. There's considerable amount of, of nickel, high-grade nickel mineralization below the old mine workings, as well as along strike. So given what what we see here, and given the, the historic extent, we think there's a, an excellent opportunity to change Mana Bridge around. Now, being with the ore group of companies, one of the, one of the companies within this shell, uh, Quebec Copper and Gold, had the exact same strategy, and they've done a wonderful job with it, in which they took a past producing copper mine, an underground mine, drilled it out, and have now shown that it has the potential for being a, a large tonnage, open pitable copper resource. That's the idea behind Mana Bridge. We know that there are these high grade shoots, which are very important because they're also high tenure sulfide nickel. So it's the right type of nickel that we want to find. But we know that there is significant amount of lower grade material. So between 0.81% material that simply wasn't mined, but it's there. And when you start adding all of that to the, to the mix of it all, then you can, you can really grow this project. So what we wanna do is we wanna drill for a maiden resource within the next 24 months. There's significant exploration previously done on the project by the, by the past operators, Falconbridge and others, which we want to move this into a different, uh, different strategy for, for mining this. All of our drill programs are planned and permitted to start at the end of February or early March. 
So basically looking at some of the grades to give you an example of, of the type of mineralization that we can find and, and the high grade that we see. So in 2019, uh, Can Alaska Uranium had drilled a, a number of drill holes three kilometers northeast of the mine. And so it's, there, are other, uh, there are other deposits within the Manabridge project itself. And you can see some of the grades here, six and a half percent, uh, six and a half meters at 2.75% nickel, two meters at four and a half percent nickel. This is extremely high grade. And so we do believe that there is potential for much more. And also there's, there's cobalt credits that were not historically assayed for. So this is something new that we incorporate into the, the whole grand scheme of, of Mana Bridge. That it's not just nickel copper, but now we have cobalt, which is also a, a battery metal in high demand. So as I was saying, you can see where, where the old mine workings are, especially on the image on the bottom left. The blue is the area that was mined out. Now everything beneath the mine is still considered extremely high grade nickel and they left a lot of that in. But you can also see along strike that there is a mineralized shell of, of quite a bit of nickel that was still untouched. And just to show you a little bit more of the grade control, so anything above, anything in the green and above is considered of interest, especially the, uh, the yellows and reds. This is, this is the primary focus for where we want to see. But we see two major trends here. We see more of a flat line trend that is sub-horizontal. And then we also see a steeper trend, which we believe are the roots. If you look at the ellipse that is labeled with E, you can see there's potential for a significant amount of high grade nickel that still extends at depth that was not mined. We believe this is a feeder zone for nickel mineralization and therefore would potentially yield far more nickel than what has been drilled off. But the project is a lot larger than just the past producing mine, which is circled in red. Uh, we have greenfield exploration as well on a sub-parallel geological trend that shows the same rock types. Now we plan to, we plan to fly this, this project in the spring this year with an airborne MT survey and hopefully define some additional targets for, for drilling. The, the Strange project, which is just about 50 kilometers southwest of Thunder Bay, Ontario, Thunder Bay, Ontario is a known mining hub. It has supported the mining and exploration uh, in industry for the past hundred years and more. So infrastructure is great there. But you can also see in to the south end of things and also to the west on the United States side that there are a couple of nickel deposits and nickel mines that already occur. Now uh, this, this whole area in Lake Superior, Ontario is part of the mid-continent rift system where the rocks opened up and the mafic, mafic and ultramafic magmas came up, uh, similar to what we see in the mid-ocean ridge today, which this was, a, this was a cratonic event, which opened right up and similar type of, of mineral, mineralization exists. So seeing nickel mines and nickel deposits on the state side and with the same rock types on the Canadian side, that is our theory is you know, why can't these things occur on the Canadian side? So that's exactly what we're looking for. Drill program is currently underway, two drill holes, 1500 meters, and we're basically testing a theory. We're testing the theory that the right rock types occur in this, in this area. Now, a technical success for us is to identify these rocks, is to see that they're there. If we can prove that, then we will continue forward by trying to find where the potential for mineralization occurs along this whole area, which we do believe has a significant amount of opportunity. When you look at the image on the right, this is magnetics, and this is these broad magnetic highs in red are the ones that we believe are these ultramafic sills 
that occur within these sediments. The sediments that were formed during the mid-continent rift itself, the mafic magmas come up and then they flow laterally along the, along the sedimentary horizons, producing sills. <clears throat> Two of our, the two drill holes will be testing the anomaly to the east, as well as the larger, the strong magnetic anomaly that is highlighted on the map here. So again, we do think that this project has the potential for having the right type of rock types and could lead us to minerals, mineralization in the Thunder Bay area. How are we going to proceed in 2022? Well, we are very active. As Gilbert mentioned, we are fully funded. We've got about 7 million in the bank, and that is sufficient to see us through the year. Manabridge will start its program end of February, early March, 3,000 meters in seven drill holes, all, all fully permitted. The Strange Project, we are currently drilling 1,500 meters, two drill holes. Looking for the technical success on that. If we hit mineralization right off the bat, well, we'll be laughing all the way. Following up Mana Bridge in the summertime, 10,000 meters of diamond drilling, and we will complete the project-wide airborne geophysical survey. Most of the diamond drilling will probably be focused on extending the, the Mana Bridge mineralization and bringing some of the historic drill holes into more, into more recent standards, as well as reassaying some of the works there for, for cobalt and other potential elements that we see. What's going to happen at Strange? That depends on, on the results that we find from this current drill program, which whether we go back to Strange in 2022 or focus solely on Mana Bridge, that remains to be seen. Right now, Mana Bridge is the flagship. It is the, the project with a lot of legs already to it, and we think that it can deliver substantial rewards to our investors. Currently have 78.5 million shares outstanding, about 100 million fully diluted. As mentioned, we have about 7 million in the treasury, so we are fully funded. And we've got a great exploration team. Myself made a number of discoveries. Stephen Stewart, who is the, uh, the founder of the Ore Group, and Mike Sweeney, our VP Exploration, who has over 30 years of nickel exploration, discovery, and bringing bringing dis, uh, new discoveries into production. And that's a rare thing to find in, in the geological space and exploration space. So we're very happy to have Mike and his, his experience on board with us. The Ore Group of Companies, who we are, if you saw my talk earlier about baseload energy, we are part of the Ore Group. Very successful group of companies. And we look to, we are excited to have Metal Energy contribute to this successful group. Again, who we are. Thank you very much. Thank you, James. And a few questions here. The first one here coming from Richard. And he'd like to know what's the nearby infrastructure now like for the Manic Bridge project? Infrastructure is beautiful. The highway's right there, there's power line, railways right there. We are about 20 kilometers south of a village called Woboden. And Woboden has supported drill operations on Manor Bridge in the past uh, 10 years, basically, and, and plus. So infrastructure is great. As far as mining infrastructure or anything like that, there's nothing that remains. The, the old shaft has been capped. There's just basically a big concrete slab. But that's, you know, that, that's better for us. Great. Uh, next one coming from Scott. He's asking about uh, when you said you're targeting high grade, what sort of numbers are you, are you targeting when you call it high grade? Uh, the past producing mine grades at Mana Bridge were two and a half percent. That's mined out of the ground. That's extremely high. Some of the, the individual assay results that we have seen from, from drilling in 2019, from drilling in 2008, uh, even historically, you're getting up to 10%, 15% nickel. It's, it's quite incredible mineralization. We think that there is far more to be discovered, especially at depth. If that feeder system exists, then there should be a lot more nickel down there. Okay, and next one coming from Grace. She's asking how long would drilling starts from both locations last? How long would the drilling last? 
the strange project we should be done that by the month end and whether we go back there in the summertime again not entirely sure but if we don't go back this summer then we'll go back in 2023. mana bridge though is our flagship and we want to continue drilling that one for as long as possible Again, 3,000 meters to start, just to provide us with some, some newer information with oriented drill core to, to really put a geological model into more context. 10,000 meters planned for this summer. And then we would be looking to raise some more money and go back and hit Manbridge even harder in 2023. Great to hear. So thank you, James, for your time and sharing your story with us here today. Thank you very much, Gilbert. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Take care. Enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you. Have a nice day.